come together and read scripture. We're going to have some time in thought about what that scripture might mean for us today. And then we're going to pause and bring all our reflections, all our thoughts, all our lives before God in prayer. So we're on Romans chapter 8 and I'm reading from uh, the Good News Translation. There is no condemnation now for those who live in union with Christ. For the law of the Spirit, which brings us life in union with Christ Jesus, has set me free from the law of sin and death. What the law could not do because human nature was weak, God did. He condemned sin in our human nature by sending his own son, who came with a nature like our sinful nature to do away with sin. God did this so that the righteous demands of the law might be fully satisfied in us, who live according to the spirit and not according to human nature. Those who live as their human nature tells them to have their minds controlled by what human nature wants. Those who live as the spirit tells them to have minds there, have their minds controlled by what the spirit wants. To be controlled by human nature results in death. To be controlled by the spirit results in life and peace. And so people become enemies of God when they are controlled by their human nature. For they do not obey God's laws. And in fact, they cannot obey it. Those who obey their human nature cannot please God. But you do not live as your human nature tells you to. Instead, you live as your, the spirit tells you to. If, in fact, God's spirit lives in you, whoever does have the spirit of Christ, who does not have the spirit of Christ, does not belong to him. But if Christ lives in you, the spirit is life for you. Because you have been put right with God, even through, even though your bodies are going to die because of sin. If the spirit of God who raised Jesus from death lives in you, then he who raised Christ from death will also give you life to your mortal bodies by the presence of his spirit in you. So then, my friends, we have an obligation, but it is not to live as our human nature wants us to. For if you live according to your human nature, you are going to die. But if by the spirit you are put to death, you put to death your sinful actions, you will live. Those who are led by God's spirit are God's children. For the spirit that God has given you does not make you slaves and cause you to be afraid. Instead, the spirit makes you God's children. And by the spirit's power, we cry out to God, Father, my father. God's spirit joins himself to our spirits to declare that we are God's children. Since we are his children, we will possess um, the blessings he keeps for his people. And we will also possess with Christ what God has kept for him. For if we share Christ's suffering, we will also share his glory. Consider, I consider that what we suffer at this present time cannot be compared with all the glory that is going to be revealed to us. All of creation waits with eager longing for God to reveal his children. For creation was condemned to lose its purpose, not of its own will, but because God willed it to be so. Yet there was hope that creation itself would one be set free from its slavery to decay and would share the glorious freedom of the children of God. For we know that up to the present time, all of creation groans with pain, like the pain of childbirth. But it's not just creation alone which groans. We have the spirit as the first of God's gifts also grown within ourselves as we wait for God to make us his children and set our whole being free. For it was by hope that we were saved. But if we see uh, what we hope for, then that's not really hope. For who of us hopes for something we see? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait with patience. In the same way, the Spirit also comes to help us, help, to help us weak as we are. For we do not know how we ought to pray. The Spirit himself pleads with us in groans that words cannot express. And God, who sees into our hearts, knows that the thought of this Spirit is because the Spirit pleads with God on our behalf and his people and in accordance with his will. We know that in all things, God's works for good to those who love him, with those whom he has called according to his purpose. Those whom God has already chosen, he has set apart to become like his son, so that the son would be among the first of many believers. And so those whom God set apart, he called, and those he called, he put right by himself, and he shared his glory with them. In view of all this, what can we say? 
if God is for us, who can be against us? Certainly not God, who is not, did not even keep back his own son, but offered him for us all. He gave his son. Will he not freely give us all things? Who will accuse God's chosen people? God himself declares them not guilty. Who then will condemn them? Not Christ Jesus, who died, or rather was raised to life and is at the right side of God, pleading with him for us. Who then can separate us from the love of God? Can trouble do it, or hardship, or persecution, or hunger, or poverty, or danger, or death? As scripture says, for your sake we are in danger of death at all times. We are treated like sheep that are going to be slaughtered. No, in all things we have complete victory through him who loved us. For I am certain that nothing can separate us from his love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor other heavenly rulers or powers, neither the present nor the future, neither the world above nor the world below. There is nothing in all of creation that will ever separate us from the love of God, which is ours through Christ Jesus, our Lord. So obviously those of you, um, which I'm assuming is probably all of you, um, have stuck with our, our Sunday uh, services, you, you will know that we went over uh, Romans 8 in some detail over the course of a couple of weeks. Um, I think you could probably preach on Romans 8 for a good, good year and still have many depths to plough. Uh, it's, it's such a dynamic passage. Like I feel that when I'm reading it continually, like these waves of building emotion and then, and then the sort of release. And as it builds to that, that finish, that nothing uh, can separate us from the love of God. And I, I think we all need to hear that and understand that. I think like we, we need to daily <laughs> sometimes meditate on that, that nothing nothing can separate us from the love of God. And the problem is that all too often um, we as humans put limitations on God's love. God's, God can't love this about a person. God can't love, you know, these people. And what Paul's saying, and he, said, he puts it so, so well, like if, if God gave Jesus when we were so far away and there was pretty much no hope that just means that it's just it's love that knows no boundaries and i mean it's destructive when we do it about a group of people or a person how even more destructive is it when we do it about ourselves that god can't love a certain part of us or a certain thing about us that that's to be hidden away and i think in many senses we can do that I know I've had conversations uh, with people where, like, even going in, even stepping foot in a church, there it's like there's an entrance requirement. Too often I've heard that flippant sort of joke that's, um, oh, I'll burn up if I go in there. Well, that means that they're not enough, or usually it's, it's, it's in jest, but the, the, commu the communication of the gospel has been, you need to behave a certain way before you're welcome, before you qualify. And when we do that equally to ourselves, who then convinces us that we are enough? That God loves us just as we are. And if we can't get that about ourselves, how much more difficult is it about every other person who is so far removed from our understanding. Now, I feel certain that we need to meditate upon this promise that nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord God, I pray that each of us today will know with greater certainty the love that you have for us i just invite us all to share in a moment of, of stillness to just put that love of god firmly in our minds
God, God, you love us completely. Even the parts that we feel we ought to hide. Even the parts that we wish weren't there. Help us to know with certainty that unconditional love. With such a certainty that it pours out from us. And we might likewise offer it to all those we encounter. Giving them the love of God which has set us free. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.